let's, let's talk for a moment, um, as we did backstage, we might get this issue out into the open and talk for a minute about the background of the famous lost orders and how decisive a role they played in, in the run-up to the battle. Stephen, why don't you start? Well, the lost order was General Lee's uh, plan to capture Harper's Ferry, the garrison at Harper's Ferry, which was 12,000 men and a good deal of uh, armament. And so he, this was in, in Frederick, and on se September 9th, he writes out orders to divide up his army into four segments. Stonewall Jackson was going to go out to the west, and other was going to completely surround Harper's Ferry. And he sent these out by courier to all the generals involved. And uh, the copy that went to Stonewall Jackson, uh, Jackson read it and then copied it again for D.H. Hill, who had been under his orders. Uh, one of the couriers was also taking the same message to D.H. Hill, and of course it never arrived. And it was dropped in a clover field south of Frederick. And uh, when we don't know why this happened or how it, how it could have been prevented or at least discovered because the uh, courier was supposed to deliver the envelope in which the, the message came with the signature and went back to the, uh, to the, the headquarters. So in any case, uh, on the 13th of September, uh, a Corporal Barton Mitchell of an Indiana regiment, they were bivouacked in this particular clover field, and he found this envelope, picked it up, uh, read the message. It also had three cigars in the envelope along with it. And he was smart enough to realize, since he recognized all these names and places, that this was pretty important. So he kicked it upstairs, went went to his uh, regimental and went up to, uh, I think it went to brigade, and then they skipped a few levels because each person that saw it realized how important it was, and it went up to uh, 12th Corps headquarters. And from there, uh, General Alpheus Williams was in charge of the Corps. He sent a covering note along with this to General McClellan saying that this looks important and we believe it is authentic, and he describes very briefly how it was found. So by noon on the, uh, thir the 13th, is that right? Yes, 13th, uh, McClellan had this order.
and to take the next step, if I may, uh, while he was he was had a, a several people from uh, the city of Frederick discussing the occupation and so on, and he was handed this this uh, dispatch, and he looked it, and supposedly he threw up his hands and said, "Now I know what to do." We're not sure whether well, this may be apocryphal, but in any case. It was, he was obviously very much excited by all of this, and he dismissed all his, his uh, guests, and off they went. Well, one of them turned out to be uh, a Confederate sympathizer. As we were discussing earlier, I think he was a Confederate spy that uh, Jeb Stewart had, uh, had paid to be on this meeting. In any case, Stewart ran off, I mean, uh, the Marylander ran off and found Stewart, and gave him this, and then it, it finally got, made its way to General Lee, the, the Stewart's announcement of all of this. But the question is, how much did General Lee know and when he knew it? And as far as I can determine, the only thing he learned from this Marylander was that something was going on, that General, that General Lee was, or General McClellan was excited about something or other. And that's, I'll leave the story there.